Hey everybody, welcome to Watch Parties here at Christ Community Church. We're so glad that you're joining us to pursue Jesus. And we also want to invite you to take the Rooted course to become even more involved with what's going on here at the church. Rooted is a simple online course that uh, you can just watch a few videos, answer a few questions, and it's going to help you discover some of your spiritual gifts, some of the things you're passionate about, and uh, help you know more about the church, who we are, where we're headed, how we're going to get there together. So I want to encourage you, especially if you're new to the church, to take advantage of that on our website, or you can click just the link right in the description of this video to find that more easily. And uh, we're really excited to be talking this week about creation. We're in a new section for watch parties as we look at doctrine, important doctrinal aspects of our faith, and we are trying to just grow as disciples. And so Elijah's going to kick us off as we continue to look at creation. Yeah, today we're focusing, narrowing in on uh, how God created everything out of nothing. Creation out of nothing is the idea we're looking at today. And the definition of the word create is to bring something into existence. And we, as believers, uh, know that that's exactly what God did. The Bible teaches that God created the universe, everything both visible and in invisible, out of nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, last week, we did look at our constitution and bylaws uh, about what we as a church believe. And first and foremost, we believe in the absolute inspiration of the Bible and hold it to be the inerrant and final authority in all matters of Christian faith and practice. And that's important because it make it shows what we believe uh secondly right here we believe that there's only one god mm -hmm. and that he has revealed himself as father son and holy spirit and that he is the creator of the heavens and the earth and all that is in them contrary to all evolutionary theory and we have that belief right out of how the bible opens up genesis 1 1 in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth and of mm -hmm. course heavens and earth including the entire universe I love how Psalm 33, 6 uh, puts it. It says, the Lord merely spoke and the heavens were created. I love how the psalmist wrote that. It, it, he just merely spoke. He didn't do much. He merely spoke and the heavens were created. He breathed the word and all the stars were born. For when he spoke, the world began. It appeared at his command. Out of nothing, it just came out from his voice. Hebrews 11, uh, 3 also says, By faith we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. Yeah, I love how you helped establish that, uh, you know, the, the foundation of what we're really describing right. here, that God created out of nothing. The scripture teaches it to us. For us to, for us to open up and say, well, it's hard to believe, and maybe there are some other scientific you know, right. things that are easier to accept, easier to understand, is to really, you know, either uh, intentionally or unintentionally uh, decide in your own thoughts, I, I don't trust the scriptures. Right. Um, and today what we're trying to do is shift you, challenge you, really put this right in front of you. Mm -hmm. Um, to bring yourself back to a submission to the Word of God. That means taking your intellect, uh, your knowledge, you know, whatever science books, whatever teaching you were brought up with in school, um, to take all of that and surrender it to the teaching of Scripture, to the Word of God. And, uh, you know, we've been following this similar pattern of, of what does it mean, why is it important. So let's dive into that. Now that we've seen Scripture, now that we've kind of refocused and said, okay, yes, I'm submitted to Scripture, what does it mean that God created out of nothing? What it means is that before God created anything, as the verses you just talked about uh, described, God speaking and creating from nothing, um, before he did any of that, nothing else exi existed except God, which means he's the only eternal one in all of the universe, all of the known or unknown universe that, that we have experienced or are yet to experience. Yeah. Every created thing has a beginning, but God, in contrast, has no beginning, has no end. He is eternal. Um, because God created out of nothing, creation has a meaning and a purpose that serves him. All of the created temporal, temporary um, aspects of what we know and what we see, feel, touch, and all of that around us has a purpose that comes from the creator, the one who is eternal. Yeah. And all of creation points to our creator. So that's what it means. And you can see that it's it's driving to something really important. It, it, it's It's a domino effect. It's a ripple, really. Uh, if we can use a, a creation, a, a created world uh, <laughs> illustration here. Um, because once you start with God created from nothing, it starts to ripple out 
and describe who he is. And we're kind of slipping back into the section we were in before this, right. talking about who God is. Because to describe creation as being created from nothing is to describe it as having a purpose pointing back to a creator. And to, to describe him as creator is also to describe him as sovereign, having all power, all authority. Mm -hmm. So why is it important is the, the next question. If God created from nothing, and that's what we're describing and defining, why is that important? It's important because they, there's a comparison and a distinction here between all the wonders of the universe. You know, I, I love all of the things that have been done and observed and talked about to see how amazing the universe is. I was just telling Elijah, we've been reading a book called Indescribable as a Family. It's a kid's devotional by uh, Louis Giglio. And if you know any of his stuff, you know online, he's got some videos about stars and, you know, creation, all kinds of cool stuff. And, um, and one of the like interesting facts that I was telling you about the other day is there's a deep sea cavern in the ocean that is so deep that if you dropped uh, Mount Everest into it, there would still be like a thousand feet of water on top of Mount Everest before you got to the surface of the That's ocean. Crazy. And there's things like that in the world that are like so mind blowing, but it all points to the intelligent creation of a creator, a God who's sovereign. Right. So really to reverse engineer this, to deny that God created the world out of nothing or to align yourself or agree with some other kind of thought outside of scripture is really to challenge God's sovereignty, which is to challenge God's nature, to challenge whether or not he is God. Uh, Wayne Grudem says this in his book, Bible Doctrine, because God created the entire universe out of nothing, no matter in the universe is eternal. Were we to deny creation out of nothing, we would have to say that some matter has always existed and that it is eternal like God. So to deny creation out of nothing is to say there is something else in the universe like God side by side with him that existed already that has no beginning. And of course, that would sort of cause our faith to completely fall apart, right? right. Um, so, so to say this, to say, well, I find it hard. I find it difficult to believe there's evidence for so much else. Um, to say that God did not create everything we know out of nothing is to challenge his independence, that he is self-sufficient, that he needs no other help or assistance. It's to challenge God's sovereignty, that he has supreme power and authority, that he's one of one. Otherwise, we make him one of whatever else is eternal. And finally, to challenge that he alone is worthy of worship. Since he is supreme over all of the universe, he alone is the one worthy and deserving of our worship. So, uh, you can see how important this is if we reverse engineer it and say, well, what if we step back and, and deny it? Or what if we say, well, there's lots of options out there that you could believe. Well, you're really in a dangerous place to do that. And we really, again, want to challenge you uh, yeah. wherever you're watching this from, whatever state you're in, whatever, you know, watch party, or if you're watching this alone, to really re-examine your heart and just say, you know, what are the areas uh, where I may be didn't understand that challenging the biblical description of creation is actually not just challenging the words on a page, but it's challenging who God is mm -hmm. uh, to reconsider that. So let's just summarize real quick here before we get to our questions. Um, before God spoke creation into being, he and only he existed. He's the only eternal one. Creation has a beginning. It has a middle that we're living in now, and it has an end, but God will last forever. He will exist forever. Um, and because only God is eternal and sovereign, he alone is worthy and deserving of our worship as the creator of all things, supreme over everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, good stuff. I, I hope you are excited to jump into some discussion. We had a lot of fun putting these questions together. And uh, yeah, we're just looking forward to growing in our discipleship together. And I'm looking forward to being together this Sunday and next week for more Watch Party Fun. We'll see you later. Have a great week. See you.
Yeah. Hello. So, man, what's that? And welcome to Watch Parties. <laughs> no, you did it. <laughs> yes, you did. No, you did it. Yes, you did. Here at C C C. My eyes are like. I feel like I've been staring at the sun, like they're watery and burning. Elijah, why don't you read Genesis 1 1? In the beginning. <laughs> okay, I really am ready now. Three, two,